We've already seen Coulomb's law and seen how we can apply it in a one dimensional case. So Coulomb's law is given by F is equal to K Q1 Q2 on R squared, where K is Coulomb's constant 9.0 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. We also sometimes see k written as 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Q1 and Q2 are the charges measured in coulombs, and R is the separation between the charges measured in meters. Now, force is a vector, so it does have a direction. For the electric force, it's directed along the axis joining the two charges. If the two charges have the same sign, then it's a repulsive force and they feel a force away from each other. If the charges have opposite signs, then it's an attractive force and they feel a force towards each other. Now this applies equally well in two and three dimensions. Often when we're considering two and three dimensions, we're going to have multiple charges involved. So we may have a number of charges distributed through space and we're trying to work out the electric force on one of these charges. In order to do that, we're going to need to invoke the law of superposition, which tells us that we can just sum together the forces as vectors to get the net force on the particle that we're interested in. So probably the best way to see how to do this is to have a look at an example. So let's have a look at an example now. So in this problem we're told that four charges, Q, 2Q, minus Q and minus 2Q are arranged in a square with side length A as shown in the diagram. And we're asked to derive an expression for the electric force on the plus Q charge due to the other charges. Okay, so in order to do this, here's our plus Q charge here. Let's sketch the direction of the forces it feels due to these other charges. So it feels an attractive force towards the minus Q charge. So we've got a force this way, and let's call this one F with a subscript minus Q to show that it's due to the minus Q charge. Now it's also attracted down here to the minus 2q charge. So we'll have a force going down this way and we'll call that F minus 2q. And then finally it's repulsed from this plus 2q charge over here because they've got the same sign. So it's going to feel a force up this way and we can call this force F2q. Now in order to calculate the size of these forces, we're going to need to know the size of the charges and also the distances between them. It's easy to see the distance between Q and minus Q and Q and minus 2Q, but we'll just need to do a little bit of Pythagoras to work out the distance between Q and the plus 2Q. So that's this length along here. To work that out, we've got side length A here and then along here. We've also got side length A, so this length along here is the square root of A squared plus A squared, which is the square root of 2A squared, which we can write as the square root of 2 times A. So now we know the distance between these two charges as well. Now, now because these are vectors, it's easiest to deal with them in vector notation. So let's use normal vector notation where we'll call this direction here I, and the upwards direction up here, j. And let's start by writing down an expression for each of these three forces here. So let's start with f for minus q. Now we know from Coulomb's law that f is equal to k q1 q2 on r squared. So we can write this as k times we've got charge q. For now, we're just considering the magnitude and then we'll put in the direction in unit vector notation. So we've got k times q and then um, q2 which is minus q. We're just going to write as q and we'll count for the direction in the vector. And then we divide by the distance squared and the distance between them is a squared. Okay, now the direction we've said is to the right because it's an attractive force because they've got opposite sides signs. So this is in the i direction. 
So we can write this as kq squared over a squared times the i unit vector. Okay, now let's consider the minus 2q. So we've got f minus 2q, and this is going to have a force in the negative j direction. But let's just start by working out the magnitude with Coulomb's law. So we've got k, we've got q, and then the magnitude of this one is 2q. And then we're dividing by a squared. And then we want to include our direction, which is in the minus j direction as it's downwards. It's an attractive force down here. So we can write this as 2kq squared over a squared. And we'll put the negative out the front and write j. And then finally, we need to calculate the force due to this plus 2q charge here which is just slightly more complicated because it's not vertical or horizontal, it's um, them combined. So let's just start by working out the magnitude of this force. So the magnitude is just, we can calculate with Coulomb's law again, so that's K times the magnitude of the charges. So we've got two, sorry, Q times two, two Q, and then we need to divide by the distance squared. So that's root two A squared and so this is equal to 2kq squared over 2a squared so this is equal to kq squared on a squared now that's the magnitude but what we want is it in unit vector notation so we've got it going up like this and we know that this is uh, sorry about the messy drawing, this is 45 degrees in here. So if that's F, then this will be F cos 45, and this side will be F sine 45. So to write this in unit vector notation, we can write, well, this is F to Q is equal to K Q squared on A squared. And then we're doing the I direction, first of all, horizontal, we can see it's going in the negative i direction, it's going back this way. So we'll put a negative out the front, and then we've got our cos 45 i, and then in the j direction it's going up, so it's in the positive j direction, so plus k q squared on a squared times sine 45 j. And then hopefully you remember that cos 45 and sine 45 are both equal to 1 on root 2. So we can write this as minus kq squared over root 2a squared i plus kq squared over root 2a squared j. So now we've written the force due to each of the three charges individually in unit vector notation. So to get the total electric force, all we need to do is um, sum these up. So the total force F is equal to um, F minus Q plus F minus 2Q plus F of 2Q. And so in the I direction, we've got KQ squared over A squared minus kq squared over root 2a squared, that's i. And then in the j direction, we've got minus 2kq squared on a squared, and we've got plus kq squared over root 2a squared j. So simplifying this a bit, we can pull common factors out. So we've got kq squared on a squared, and then this is one minus one on root two i. And then we've got minus kq squared on a squared, and this is two minus one on root two j. So leaving it in unit vector notation is absolutely fine. If you wanted to, you could use Pythagoras' theorem to convert this to a magnitude angle format, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you to try.